Democrats together. And that's a rare sight. They both agreed that the Guam Election Commission is doing a pretty good job. Let's be the peacemaker for called the child of God. And I know, Miss Miss Maria, I'm about to bust into Kumbaya because we made the Republicans and Democrats agree. <laughs> is there anything that Maria cannot do? She's We're gonna send you. She knows how to cook. We're sending you to the Middle East. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna need you to broker a ready. deal. <laughs> we need you to go help with the yeah, federal election. Her, uh, yeah, can you go help with the federal election? The presidential election. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Maria, can you run the CDC? Good morning, Miss Maria. Good morning, Chris Malafunction, Barnett, and Bree <laughs> Salas Matanati, and Jason Salas and Jofis for office. <laughs> Wait, can we get can we get the can we get the hand signal, Maria? Because there you go. Every time when she comes on, we always give her like the Taylor Swift, you know, the heart <laughs> right heart hand gesture. Uh, Miss Maria, so this is it, right? Last day of in-office voting for the congressional uh, runoff election. Can you give us the details? Yes, the detail? today is the last day okay. Okay. for in early voting. Mm -hmm. For early voting. So you guys had your meeting yesterday, test run. How did things go? It went. It went very smoothly, and it, uh, we were out of there in in less than an hour. So it went very smoothly. Ooh, does that um, mean? Uh... On election night? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We're working very hard. We're working with our precinct officials. Um, our precinct official coordinators just left to go look at, to check out all the polling sites and make sure that the supplies and the equipment are handy and ready to go. You guys had a test election yesterday, right? How'd that go? Who won? <laughs> you know... <laughs> I don't know who won. Uh, we had 268 ballots, so we can test the two ovals for every precinct uh, twice, and it went well. Um, so, uh, like I said, we were out of there in less than an hour. Um, what can we anticipate uh, tomorrow, uh, Ms. Maria, as you open up all the polling places for this uh, election? Is it going to be pretty much the same kind of thing we saw in the general? Um, yes, and you know, I I, I was very um, I'm very uh, really happy that most of our precinct officials are coming back to work with us. Uh, a majority of them, so they've had good experience for the general, and now uh, in, two weeks later, we're they're opening up again. So we hope that goes smoothly. We have our staff ready to go out if they need help. Uh, we will open 7 o'clock a.m. and close at 8 o'clock p.m. Um, what about uh, homebound voters and servicing uh, people in quarantine and isolation and GMH? Okay. GRMT? So, so we've gone to we've gone to GMH. Uh, we have had no calls from GRMC. Um, we've serviced. Um, We've serviced homebound voters who are in isolation, or and but we're going out again today and tomorrow to service those. We have a few pending from the ones that have called um, tonight or to, today, tonight and tonight. We're going to the ice uh, to the quarantine facility. I, from my last update, we haven't had a call from the isolation facility. So people in the isolation facility and the quarantine facility, we've left flyers with the coordinators there and um, they've called us. And so we are scheduled to go down there to, today. Mm -hmm. How many people mm -hmm. have uh, voted so far? Over 5,000 have voted, um, and uh, people are already in line this morning uh, when we open up at 9, 9 o'clock. Isn't it Manuka hour uh, first, right, and 9, 9 to 10? Yes, you know, I, I've been hit with that, but 
downstairs and curbside, there's no way to make two lines. So starting at nine o'clock, it's always first come first serve. But during the week last week, most of them that came early were Manamku. So they were first in line. Upstairs, we have two lines. We have the Manamku line and we will service them first between nine o'clock and 10 o'clock. Ms. Maria, did you see Dr. Shea's letter? I heard, I just heard it, um, Chris, uh, right before I came on. And I don't know if our, uh, I'm, you know, for the Guam Election Commission, our hands are tied. It's the organic act that tells the Guam Election Commission that we have to have a, we have to have a runoff 14 days after the general election. So can can you clarify that? Because there are a lot of people out there who think that um, for whatever reason that we're allowed to just not have this runoff election. I, I'll repeat it, okay. It's the Organic Act. It's in the Organic Act that requires the Guam Election Commission to hold on, to uh, host a runoff election 14 days after the general election. So the general election was on November 3rd, exactly 14 days later is Tuesday, November 17th. And that's why uh, because of that and because of another um, federal requirement and a local requirement as well, we've had to send uh, special ballots to our off island voters so that they have time to send back their their ballots before November 2nd. So it's required, it's not politics. No, it's required by federal law okay. to have to have it then. During the GEC meeting yesterday, uh, were there any other um, issues that were discussed or, or resolved? Um, there, uh, during the general election, there were two sets of voter challenges, one in pneumatic or three in pneumatic and one in Assen. So we presented to the, the legal counsel and I presented to the board, the information that we collected, um, uh, and the letters we wrote to the people involved and based on, based on the voter challenges. Um, and the uh, letters we wrote and that, and you know, what came back to us or what did not come back to us, the commission um, uh, concluded that those should be, those ballots, sh those absentee ballots should not be counted. Uh, uh, what, what were the challenges about? It was about- um, that, they, that they were not from that, from that village so the three three from pneumatic and one from Assen. So basically it's like someone says, Hey, that person's not from pneumatic. Why are they voting here? And then you guys check it and if it's true then Correct. Your yes. primary election, their ballot. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and those uh, for those for those four individuals, three from pneumatic and one from Assen, because of the challenge, right? Uh, the Guam Election Commission looked into it and um, based on what the challenger said, um, that's what the commission had sided with. Okay. And so everything is still set to recount uh, GIGO and Guam, the Guam Education Board on uh, Friday, I wanna say is what you said? Yes, okay. Friday, November 20th, Bree. Okay. And the reason it's only then is because November 18th it, at five o'clock PM is the last day for Guam Election Commission to receive general election off island ballots. So that's fr uh, Wednesday, November 18th at five o'clock PM is the last day for GEC to receive off island ballots. Hence the uh, recount and tab uh, recount and the uh, um, counting of the absentee ballots will take place on Friday. And when will you guys certify the results? 
Um, we also planned it so that it could be certified after the recount and after the tabulation of the absentee ballots on Friday, November 20th. So sometime Friday, Friday night, we can yes. have uh, see all of the uh, elections be certified. Yes. Barring any new complaints. Correct. Okay. What well, kind of actually, November 18th is the last day for us to receive complaints as well. Okay. Uh, Ms. Maria, what kind of night are we going to see on election night? Are we going to go till 7 <laughs> in the morning again? Or? <laughs> no, that's funny. You should ask, Chris. Um, the other thing, the other mandate that Guam Election Commission has is to count all the provisional ballots that can count by November 18th. So after the unofficial results, after we get to the unofficial results of the runoff election, the board will begin to look at the provisional ballots. So up there at the field house, we will then be uh, right after the unofficial election results are, are published we will begin the count of provisional ballots. Provisional ballots must be counted within 10 days of the election, 10 work days. So November 18th is the deadline to count provisional ballots. And these are from the general election? Yes. So we received about over uh, 100, one, 160 provisional ballots throughout, from throughout the island. So the one of the jobs of the Guam Election Commission is to vet those provisional ballots and to see how many we can count. So we've gone through the process. Um, we've contacted some of the provisional vote voters that we can or that, that could be, that should be contacted. And we're going, we're getting ready for we're getting those ballots ready for the commission commissioners come Wednesday morning, early Wednesday morning. Are any of those so that will happen at the field house? Are any of those from Jigo? <laughs> you know, I asked, and yes, there are some from Jigo Bree. Yeah, yeah, because you know that was a really tight race. Yes, yes, mayor, yeah. so yes. It could make a big difference. Uh -huh. How many from Jigo? I don't know with the provisional ballots. I don't have a, I don't have a good count. Um, we're looking to, you know, with the um, with the transfers that began at the DMV, um, mo when motor voter registration began at the DMV in March of 2019, when people had signed off to update their re their voter registration. Um, that made Guam election uh, responsible for transferring to them to the correct voting district. So on the DMV application, if they in indicated a residence address that um, that's not where their voting district is, we will transfer that voter to the correct voting district. So in our list of provisional voters, we have quite a few where they were uh, they were in the wrong voting district. Mm. So those will count, except except for the district races or the mayoral and vice mayoral races. Well, Miss Maria, you know that machine I was able to vote on. What was it called again? The express vote. Yeah, th those are all working good for tomorrow. Um, those express votes, we were, uh, uh, we, we only have them, uh, Chris, for here at our, our in-office site. Okay. I see. We don't have them for the, we don't have them for the precincts. You know what, uh, Ms. Marie, I don't know if, uh, uh, there's been any movement on this, but were there any complaints, uh, made to the commission about, uh, uh, people campaigning for or against uh, candidates um, uh, spending money and all that and not doing the required paperwork because you have to 
Don't you have to be like a political action committee to spend money to campaign for or against a candidate or an issue? Right before the primary election, the Guam Election Commission had written a couple a couple of letters to um, organizations that were acting as political action committees that have not registered with us. So those letters went out, I believe at least one of them has uh, filed their uh, organizational report. How many letters went out, did you say? Two. Two We're letters talking. went out. And, and yeah. one responded. Yes. Mm -hmm. Are there penalties um, or anything associated with this? Yes. Um, there's a penalty of, I think, uh, the maximum is $10,000. So per was... violation? Yeah, for not for not filing, I believe. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. I may be wrong. I may be wrong, Bree, but I think it's, I think it's ten thousand um, dollars, up to ten thousand dollars for not filing. You said since the primary election, you sent out letters. Yes, right before the primary. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, right before the primary, um, because as uh, um, as the deadline for the preliminary. Um, reports, the preliminary campaign finance reports, we wanted to make sure we gave them an option. I mean, we wanted to make sure that they could um, they could comply with the mandate to, uh, to, to submit an organizational report and a prelimin preliminary campaign finance report right. for the primary. I'm sorry, for the for, yes, for the primary. Right. Yeah, Miss Maria. Is there a deadline to respond? Um, no, but because of the schedule, um, because of the schedule uh, of the filing deadlines, the Guam Election Commission does not look at those reports until after certification mm -hmm. of the, um, in this case, after the runoff election. So, Ms. Maria, if these letters were sent before the primary, then I'm assuming that it was one of the more high-profile uh, PACs that's been out here uh, campaigning. But I wanted to ask, because I saw on social media, there were a lot of um, uh, attack ads against candidates um, that didn't look like they were from any political action committee. They looked like just the wild, wild west, you know, people buying ads to bash on candidates. Um can you clarify what's the law on that? Can 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 anybody just spend money to campaign against people who are running for office or for or against issues in an election? Um, yeah. So on media campaigns, on 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 print campaigns, um, the on print campaigns there has to be um, there has to be a place on the ad that says paid for by. And whoever paid for it, whether it be a person or a committee, plus an address. For uh, vi video and audio ads, there must be a mention of who paid for the those ads or if and if the candidate um, uh, approved of the ad. So... Let's say, for example, I was out here and I really got something against, you know, someone who's running for senator. Can I go buy a bunch of ads and be like, this person is evil. Don't vote for them. Um, so in, in, that, in that situation, Chris, the, um, the threshold is if Chris spent $250 or more, Chris, if you're if you're spending money to uh, to campaign for or against a candidate or an issue up for election, if you spent two hundred fifty dollars or more, or when you spend the two hundred fifty dollars, you have to file an organizational report within ten working days. So who checks and, on that? Is that you guys' job to check on that, or does the public have to submit a complaint? Because it's happening, we all see it. Yes. So, so, so both, both, both the public and the and the GEC, and so it makes it a tough job for the GEC 
with regard to social media and internet advertising, um, because they, you can advertise for free or you can go, individuals can support or, or go against ca campaigns um, um, for free, or it doesn't, um, it doesn't, um, uh, um, it doesn't cost anything. So with regard to whether they they have to report, it's based on the threshold. And that's what the law says, the right. threshold of $250. Well, let me know if you guys need help figuring it out because it's actually pretty easy to figure out how much money people have spent because it pops up in our feed a lot. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Miss Maria, anything in closing uh, for today? Is you you anticipating a lot of people coming out today? Yes, there's already a long line around the corner for a curbside. I believe there's also a line upstairs at the th on the third floor for people to vote this morning. We're only open until twelve o'clock this noon today for in office absentee voting. Tomorrow, the polls will open at 7 o'clock and close at 8 o'clock p.m. And let the people of Guam know, please, that if you are registered, if you were registered for the general election, even though you did not vote in the general election, you can come out to vote in the runoff election. All 55,800 people who are now on the voter registry can come out to vote early today from nine o'clock to 12 o'clock or tomorrow between seven o'clock and eight o'clock, seven o'clock AM and eight o'clock PM. Bring your mask, wear your mask, bring a black pen and please practice social distancing. Thank you, Ms. Maria. Thank you. You're very welcome. Sidus Maasi. Agamas. God bless and good luck. We need it. Thank you. Of course. Okay, Miss Maria. Um, Miss Maria, there's virtual hot dog and uh, macaroni soup in the in the Zoom room. I I have hot coffee waiting for me. Thank you. You need some of that soup though to wash it. It's got all everything you need: carbs, protein. Okay. <laughs> Will do. Thank you, Miss. There you Esta. go, Miss Maria Pangolina. And let's keep it in the KUAM News Zoom room, uh, where we're going to be joined now by uh, the public. Do we, or should we take a break? No, keep going. Okay. We got it. Uh, where we're we're going to be joined here by uh, public health uh, spokesperson Janela Carrera on a Monday. Good morning, Janela. Good 